All right. Well, I'd like to welcome back to the Cannabis Podcast, Philip James Latham, fresh off a wedding and congratulations to you. I think technically I'm almost three months married. So like still we're like a quarter of a year. We're going to have our three month anniversary in eight days. Well, congratulations in the macro of things. It was yesterday. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Right. Well, time construct, you know, that whole you know, deal. Time. What is time? But uh, we're going to be talking about some, uh, we're going to have a little coffee cannabis conspiracy chat. Mm -hmm. So uh, to help the algorithm, if you're watching, hit the like button, subscribe, and uh, check out uh, Philip's documentary called The Last Century. And uh, last time you were here, talked about it. Give us a little update and how it was doing and uh, disclose everything you can. Uh, so The Lost Century and How to Reclaim It, it was up on platforms for a little while, uh, but there was some hinky business that happened along the way. Uh, so the distribution company that put the film out is 1091 Media. Uh, they had been acquired, I can't remember how long ago, I think sometime in 2022, uh, by a company called Chicken Soup for the Soul. You may or may not have perused a book that they've published uh but that company had actually gone on like an acquisition spree and bought up a bunch of companies including 1091 uh but then the latter half of 2023 had completely stopped paying back-end royalties to any of the filmmakers mm. so as you can imagine that made people a little upset uh so i believe there is a lawsuit happening i'm not exactly sure who is a party to that but i do know that several titles have been removed from the 1091 catalog and shifted over to other distribution outlets so oh, i believe i believe the lost entry should be back up if it's not currently still up um again this goes kind of above what i'm aware of uh just because that's not stuff that i was a part of mm -hmm. um but I, I i can't remember which films like the one of the other ones that i did that came out early 2023 no it came out december 2022 um uh missing four and one the ufo connection uh that film i know had gotten pulled from all the platforms and is now back up on platforms so that one's still available um why but, do they keep yeah, pulling down as... and messing with them uh, so if they change distributor hands, oh. the, the the early distributor has to take them down, hand them over digital asset wise, and then the new distributor puts quote puts them back up. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. That makes sense. So well, distribution yes. partners, right? And like uh, you know, I I am now working with a couple people, uh, that are trying to kind of reevaluate how that happens and see you know what other kind of approaches can be done like i mean i'm sure you came across uh what was it called i literally just had it on the tip of my tongue um mickey mickey willis uh plandemic mm. when that came out <clears throat> so plandemic like was it was released i'm pretty sure just like on a website and then it was just like encouraged like hey share this far and wide right and it like caught fire and went went viral blah 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 was apparently viewed like i mean i heard somebody say it was like over a trillion times i was like shut up <laughs> all right a lot we'll, we'll go with a lot yeah yeah so um you know just trying to figure out what the best you know approach to getting eyeballs on content is i mean to me it doesn't seem like there's any like secret recipe per se but you know then factor in what we also know in terms of all of the string pulling and you know cloak and daggery digital cyber warfare type stuff that happens you know which is getting crazier it's getting yeah now you have ai people ai people ugh, ai entities you know influencing the whole landscape even more which like i heard like not to now that we're talking ai i did hear a really good quote that i i want to like get your take on I was at Conscious Life Expo a couple weeks ago, happened early February. And I was listening to a panel discussion about artificial intelligence with a lot of people that are in in the business, you know, 
Um, and one of the speakers is a friend of mine, uh, Adam Curry. He's been in a bunch of the movies that we've done. Uh, and he, he like, I was like, what he said, I was like, wow, perfect. Because like, you know, you and I have talked before about technocracy and fourth industrial revolution, the world economic mm -hmm. forum. And we're all getting like ushered into this like digital gulag type situation. Adam's sentiment was when it comes to artificial intelligence, think of it like a dragon. You don't want to fight the dragon you'll lose you don't want to like hide from the dragon because it will probably find you and when it does you know it'll it'll burn you you want to learn how to ride the dragon interesting analogy he used being the year of the dragon didn't even think about that but that is also true um but yeah like to be able to harness the power of something that you know can inflict immense harm and you know is also kind of still you know mythologized to a large degree i was like wow like how poetic but also like yeah i i agree with that because i've like tinkered around with chat gpt a little bit like i haven't you know it, not everything i'm re i'm not googling things on chat gpt let's just keep it right to that that agreement but like you know when it comes to like hey can you kick me out you know, uh, what did I ask for? Like a summary of this like book. And actually one of the coolest like Reddit posts that I saw, this is probably like a month or so ago. It was long, but this guy asked it, can you summarize? Like he had a long prompt, but basically like the long short of it was summarize for me all of the different books of the Bible. Right. Oh, wow. Oh, it gets better. Oh, wow. Some, so the, so and that includes out, like Enoch, right? Like, everything even and he even said he was like even the ones that aren't included in the king james uh, edition. all right good so like like all the original biblical books and stories so it kicks out this you know synopsis or whatever and then his next like or he had asked i can't remember the order that he asked it in but essentially it was like you know uh what would happen if a more intelligent species came to a planet and was trying to subjugate the the inhabitants of said planet you know as far as like the intellect disparity being as vast as it was and you know chat gpt kicked out this whole thing then it was the bible summary and then it was okay now integrate those two components all the biblical stories with a you know this you know not master race but like a far advanced civilizations you know race or species and like dude my mind was blown i was like oh my god that's what it's about wow it was it was it, I'll, I'll if i find it i'll send it to you i was gonna say send it to me because it's it's worth a read i was I, like i was like whoa the yeah. i forget when it was that that's fascinating i was wondering about that how J chat gpt would talk about religion and the bible like would it you know if you put everything in order and then it, then it kicks out a different summary than what you know, like, do you say, well, no, AI, you know, still has a ways to go. Or do you sit here and go, oh, maybe I'm wrong or. I, I'd say both, honestly, because right. like, especially in the past like week, I don't Have you heard the whole thing with like Gemini being super woke? Oh, the uh, how it wouldn't even do white people. That's or like that's that's kind of wild. The, like, the fact that like the founding fathers were depicted as you know right. colored color you know i was like although there are rumors there's there's conspiracies that abraham lincoln's father was black um oh, oh i've never heard that before uh like really uh um, yeah no and you know i don't know how valid this this thought is but you know it was talking about i think literally it, his father or father's father was was black and cool that's not to get into conspiracies, but that's why the penny is Yo, you, copper instead of silver, and he's facing well, the other uh, way. And that's stuff that you can get from Dick Gregory. Um, cool. D Dick Gregory is amazing. And, Dick Gregory. Right oh, yeah. He's a comedian activist. He's the one that actually showed the first public viewing of the Zapruder film. Oh. He, he's a government asset. Um, but he was oh, a that's okay but he was really good friends with john lennon and yoko ono and he was he's 
he's passed away now, but if you want knowledge dropped on you, just a, a brain bomb, oh, listen to Dick Gregory's conversations. Um, he has before he dies, he kind of like does a three, four hour multi episode podcast with these guys. And basically in a way does his memoirs live on, you know, in a podcast. And cool. he was the one that was given the Zap Ruder film to show on like Johnny Carson or like a late night film He's the one that talks about fasting and and a lot of stuff. So he, oh man, it's cool it, for this everybody. Guy, yeah. yeah, like I I don't even want to do him injustice by you know talking about like he, you know he talks about you know somebody asked him like do you believe in God he goes we're all I'm God you're God you know we're all gods you know because we were created by them um, you know that's why they say in the Bible a creator. You know, um, so yeah, everybody listening and you tech out, just go to YouTube and just listen to Dick Gregory. He's a comedian, um, but he was really integrated with all those major players that, that were assassinated and not assassinated back in the day. Well, wow. oh, speaking of assassinations, you knew that um, Arafat was assassinated, right? Palladium. I didn't know what it was. Like I, I hadn't heard what it specifically was, but his wife basically came out and was like, yeah, so it was Palladium and, you know, the only people that had access to that kind of nuclear material or radioactive material were the Israelis, but I'm not saying that the Israelis did it, uh, but it also would have had to be somebody that was like super close to him. And apparently like the official story was on Reuters until October of last year and it got taken down. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, the, I don't know if you've ever heard, have you heard of Richard Grove? Mm -mm. So Richard Grove does a podcast called Grand Theft World. I've been like obsessed with okay. that. I mean, granted these podcasts, they're like six to eight hours long because he basically him and this guy, uh, Tony Myers basically like stay up all night with their technical producer, you know, behind the scenes guy, uh, LD. And they just go through the the weeks previous. It's like last week tonight, but like yeah. actually informative because Richard's uh he he his lower thirds he's a historian and Tony's is a, he's a logic professor. So mm -hmm. it's really interesting to hear the dynamic that they have because obviously both of them are like super educated when it comes to history and the sequence of events. Like and we're talking like real history, not like oh, I went to public school and I can regurgitate history of the white man kind of a thing. It's like, no, 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 no. Like, no, I've read a lot of you. books. Yeah. <laughs> like you see Richard's library like behind him in his, yeah. in his set. It's it's like they've got some crazy, like the they had a, a $500 note from early, uh, early Israel. And it's got uh, one of the Rothschilds on it. And on the like, there's something on the back of it, but like, it's basically just saying like, yeah, we colonialized what was formerly Palestine, full stop, you know, I, but I also didn't know that like, one of the Rothschilds paid to have the Knesset constructed, uh, one of them paid for, uh, like, they have Rothschild Boulevard running through the heart of Jerusalem, like all this kind of stuff. So I was like, Oh, wow. And I also learned the other day that like, <clears throat> uh, the uh what are they called the the lehigh party had actually opted to join the nazis during world war ii and that like the lehigh party was one of the early israel political uh political parties i believe i'm getting that right uh and then the other thing that i learned was that the the original national social national socialist party the reason they abbreviated it with a Z is because of their alignment with the Zionist party. Mm. National nationalist Zionists and that the Zionists aligned to gather up all of the Jews that did not support the Zionist end goals. I don't know how much of this is going to be too spicy for whatever platform well, you put this on. Well, I was just about to say it's at least going on rumble, <laughs> uh, but it, it that will probably have less problems than on YouTube. YouTube probably have like nine different little Wikipedia things underneath That's it. Okay. But everything we're going to say, you know, checks out um, on something. And I mean, that goes 
I mean, I'm, I can, I'm like watching in real time, how many people learn about the Balfour doctrine and a lot of things. It's really interesting. Like when you look at all these, all events, whether it's cannabis or war or whatever, I have this theory that obviously it's inevitable. We could, me and you and the normal person couldn't have stopped, you know, what's going to happen. But I look at these events, you got, you know, as learning opportunities, right? You know, before you comment on something, you know, this is how I was taught in college is, oh, hey, I see that. I look something up at least real quickly. And then I, at the very least, read the Wikipedia, even though Wikipedia is run by the intelligence agencies, at least read the Wikipedia thing. It takes five minutes. But all these things that are happening, you know, I'm, it's really interesting. A lot of people that supported the Israeli war are not so loud right now. And because what's happening is what we said was going to happen. You know, it's, it's just like United States, like after 9-11, we had all the support in the world from every country in the world. And then we squandered it. Uh -huh. And over that last 20 plus years, the United States credibility is just zero now. It's tanked. And now we're the only ones that are voting against a ceasefire. And then that same day we're saying, we want peace. We want, yeah. we want all this stuff. And you're, and you're like, guys, we, I mean, this is, I'm going back to what I was saying about learning. This is what everybody's learning now is that you follow and I don't know why people don't do it with politicians. They do it with their friends and stuff like, oh, I don't believe what they say. I believe what they do. Yes. And you're like, yes. well, you're, I don't talk to that guy anymore because he lied to me or he took my money or whatever. And you're like, they're mm. doing the same thing, but worse. But On why don't you, hold, why yes. do you hold them to the same standard that you hold the people around you to? It's so crazy, dude. It's so crazy. Well, and what you were saying is like, oh, the people that supported the war aren't so loud anymore. You, you heard about the, the congressman that got like a camera put in his face and was just like, what do you think about all of the, you know, people dying in Gaza? And he was like, I think we should kill them all. Yeah. I, I, how, what you hold public office, bro. You can't, what? I, I and just... like, I, and I was so, so that motivated me to, to go back and like, look into like, what were our politicians saying rhetoric wise after nine 11? It wasn't quite to this like level of depravity even then. The, and the, that was like the what? The the people, like I was in where were you at nine? Like were you in Ohio, uh, LA, California? Like where were you? So so I grew up in Northern Virginia. Okay. Uh I like I had parents coming to my middle school when that happened in okay. fatigues, picking up their kids because the Pentagon got hit. And then they were mm. like, all right. This is bad news bears. So, well, Pentagon got hit. It uh, got hit by something. Yeah. Yes, definitely something. There was a big boom, and it just so happened to be in, in the part of the Pentagon that had been investigating the, the investigating the missing money from, from their budget. When like, they were I doing feel like the all they do now is just say, something bad happened. Let's go. And they like we're like, well, hold on, hold on. Like, what, what happened? What Tell happened? <laughs> Tell, no, don't worry about it. It's too late. It's already over. Forget about it. It's in the past. You're like, wait, you're what? It's like how a drunk dude gets laid at the bar at 2 p.m. at 2 a.m. Like, where are my friends? Don't worry about it. We're going home. You're like, oh, yeah. Like, that's, dude, take, you're, drink, drink, drink the rest of this drink. drink. Drink your drink. Drink your drink. And then we'll be we'll go home. And you're like, hold on. Why are we? And then, you, and then you're like, I don't feel normal. Like, why are we in such a rush to go home to your place? Well, we, you know, we got we got to like, go. We, we got to go. go. You're like, ah. if you're if any dude. random person saw that, they'd be like, whoa, hold on. No, that's not normal. Are you OK? Yeah. Are you OK? Do you need help? Do you need you know, help? Yeah. Wink once or twice if you need help. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, for anybody listening, it's the same. I mean, politicians is the same tactics. It's just like with weed. Chuck Schumer, six months to 10, 10 months ago, was like the, the Safe Banking Act is right around the corner about to pass. And that's six, eight months ago. And then they say, the Ukraine war is about to end. That was six, eight months ago. We're getting close to a ceasefire. That was October 9th. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. And I, I don't know. I have no idea what's going to happen, but. Dude, me neither. And like at this point now, like that statement applies to so many different fucking insane things that are happening. Like, When's the Ukraine Russia thing gonna end? I don't know. I have no idea what's gonna happen with that. When's the you know, when will there be some degree of you know, not even disarmament? Like, that's the other goofy thing about the like, sorry to keep harping on Israel Palestine, like, but it's like 
it's so of the moment right now and like everything is so backwards but also like they're literally contradicting it like the u.s and israel are literally live contradicting themselves from what they say to one group to what they say on a you know a different instance and like all of their bullshit is just like getting aired out in real time and like some people that are still like you know watching whatever mainstream platform they get their information from are like oh yes that makes sense and then other people you me probably people that watch your content and stuff are like well you know all of the politicians over in israel said that they're not going to have a two-state solution that that's not happening there's already plans for settlements going into gaza why are they destroying an entire neighborhood like demolishing it to the bare earth how, how if can there wasn't a... sorry go ahead go ahead no 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 go ahead no how... clearly we're gonna have... this is gonna be a conversation so <laughs> how could joe biden issue an executive order for a foreign country so he issued an executive order for the Israeli settlement people to not, you know, to stand down, to not do anything, to whatever. And you're like, you just, you didn't, that didn't do anything. Like, I give them a stern talking to. Go ahead. You're, you're fine. Like, yeah. it's, Waggy, like said, Waggy. the second they're talking right here, we want a ceasefire. We're hoping for peace next week. United States just bombed, you know, the food convoy. And when we're telling them to go to Rafa, bombed. And we're, it's like a game of, do I mean, when you zoom out, it is very obviously ethnic cleansing, like very obvious. And it fits, it, it fits every, every element of the definition of genocide. It, Full and, stop. What's, and what's wild is that we are in between a rock and a hard place because, okay, say, and this is what my senior thesis paper was over the Arab Israeli conflict. Um, when I was, oh, nice. when I was in college, obviously things have changed. Um, but my thesis conclusion was you can lay out facts and statistics on each side and whichever way you look mm -hmm. at it. But until sure. one side, you know, acts Christ like in the sense of they forgive their neighbors and say, you know what, I'm going to debt it. I'm not going to retaliate. I could, I'm not going to retaliate. I want a solution that goes to Martin Luther King Jr. stuff like that goes to turn the, you know, listen, firm, but fair. And what, what can anybody do to stop, what's going on. So if you get a two state solution right away, okay, so Palestine's obviously going to ally themselves with the Arab world. Israel's still going to be with the Western world. The second uh, Palestine was attacked by Israel, that you don't think the Arab countries are going to support the Palestinian state and jump on the opportunity to start attacking Israel? Of course they're going to. So that's almost worse than the single solution they have now. Although what is the alternative solution? And the, the irony is you have, like you said, these warmonger senators and congressmen and people, and a lot of Zionists saying, you know, Iran is a theocracy, Saudi Arabia is a theocracy, all these other places. What do you think Israel is? It's a theocracy. And they say, and then when they refer to it, they say it's the only democracy in, in the Middle East. And you're like that, but it's an ethno, it's an ethno it's, state. It's an ethno state. It's an ethno nation state. And basically, it's an apartheid, it, yeah, under it's apartheid. Theocracy. <laughs> yeah. And then at the same time, they slam these other places. And it's like, you're, you know, my family's Jewish. You know, my, mm -hmm. my whole mom's side of the family is all Jewish. And they, they're very good people. They're, you know, doctors and lawyers and, and everything like that. But they're all soft spoken. They don't, you know, very intelligent and, and great, warm hearted people. Nobody wants what's happening to happen. And that, just because you're just because you're Jewish or even just because you're Israeli does not qualify you as a Zionist automatically. That, that is, those are very those are very different things, even yeah. though you have a lot of the people that are pushing the propaganda side of the Israeli initiative that would like to obfuscate that differentiation. Those things need to be very distinguished, different type, like, you know, nomenclature in people's minds. I'll never forget the first time I realized, like. Being anti-Zionist is not anti-Semitic. Furthermore, being anti-Semitic is not actually being anti-Jew. It's actually a word that means to be against the descendants of Shem. And it just so happens that a lot of the brown people that are in Israel and Palestine are descendants of Shem. So if you're it, actually looking at the definition the right way, right. Zionists are kind of anti-Semitic. And right. furthermore, furthermore, most of the Zionists 
are the propagators of some of the most heavily anti-Semitic content. And there's actually a word in um, in the Israeli military, Hasbara. Hasbara is the name, is the word that they use for their propaganda. Um, that what's what's some other vocabulary I've learned recently? Uh, the Hannibal Directive. Do you know what this is? I explain. <clears throat> so the Hannibal Directive is basically the Israeli military doctrine that says that they're allowed to kill even their own soldiers that. Uh, may get captured or potentially could be captured by their opposition and they can just like wipe them out. So there's a lot of people that are saying like, well, it looks like what's happening with the hostages that they're that they care so much about and they want to see come home from a government's perspective. The military is also exterminating those people just to be able to say like, oh, well, we're getting rid of Hamas. It just so happens that we have to kill our prisoners as well. Oops. But it's part of their literal like marching orders. It's so which, crazy. Which is which is fascinating that they have that doctrine, yet they say they're negotiating for their hostages. Those are two yeah. antithetical correct, you know, you know stances correct. to take. So you can't be consistent with that. So not to mention in the Jewish religion, um, by our book, the Jews are the real Jews are supposed to be led back to Israel slash Palestine. Palestine. By the Messiah, By right? The Messiah. So <laughs> if you're already there, yeah. you're not doing what the book <clears throat> says. And I brought that up to a lot of people, and they're like, Well, and I'm like, you I'm, you know, there's no answer to that. Like that, I mean, for example, you're in LA, large Hasidic Jewish population and conservative Jewish population all around LA. Why aren't they living in Israel? They even say, because we're not supposed to go back yet, because yeah. we're supposed to be led back by our Messiah. And the irony about all this, I've been yeah. I've been thinking too, like the Christians say Jesus is going to return. And then the Jews say he's going to show up one time. And so at some point, they're both going to be right. Right. Mm -hmm. Like if mm -hmm. something came back, Christians would be like, that's him again. And then the Jews would be like, no, that's him for the first time. It's like. Are we going to like argue? He's here. Many, <laughs> yeah. Are we going to argue how many dates we've been on, or we're going to just say we're dating? <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like, uh, I mean, I, I could go off on this for a long time. Anyways, so segue into something else. Also, pause timeout. You know that there's nine. I'm just going to I'm going to stop it and then just record okay. again, and then I'll just cut um, all together. Okay, cool. Uh, so segue. Uh, I just went to like I got hit up by my mom actually. She was like, hey, your friend is in this new net or like has something to do with this new thing coming out on Netflix. And I'm like, oh, OK, cool. And she's like, yeah, you know, I don't know what it's about or anything or what her role in it was. But like, I just thought you might want to know. It's cool. So I hit her up. I hit her up. She's like one of my best friends, like from early, early high school. And then we graduated together. <clears throat> I, I frame it like that because the pro the project that's coming out. It's called the program cults, kidnappings or something like that. Um, it's literally up on like the main banner on Netflix, which is really cool. It comes out Tuesday, uh, oh, three, cool. three episodes, three episodes. Um, so I ended up talking to her and she was actually come. She came out to LA. Uh, they had a screening of the first episode last Monday. Um, and it's super fucked, like just full stop. Like it, 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 the story is so crazy. And it's about when she got taken away to this other school when we were in high school and like i was basically under the impression that she had just like gone to a boarding school because she'd gotten in trouble or something mm -hmm. <clears throat> so much worse than that i bring this up to say to 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 one put a cap on israel palestine because she had actually done her master's thesis on the israel palestine conflict she was just in the west bank last summer and she's also now working in uh like human rights organizations but uh, she was like, Philip, I've been to I was she was like, I was in Sudan during that war. Mm. And she's like, I've, she's like, I've been to war zones. I've been to pe like places that are like suffering famines. Like I've been to like some really, really messed up places. Nothing compares to the is the Israelis treatment of Palestinians. And that's even in the West Bank. Which also, I found that the West Bank's actually split up into three sections, A, B, and C. And then there's certain control levels that the Palestinians don't have. But like section C, which is like 20% of the West Bank, they have like, you know, 
sixty percent or so control over, but the IDF can come and go whenever they please. It's also one of the like hot settlement areas. Mm -hmm. um, B is a little bit less controlled, and then A like they have like no presence or control in or whatever. Like just it, everything about that whole situation is just so crazy to me like the more and more i've learned about it or the fact that like literally in the balfour declaration the first sentence has to do with from the river to the sea that's also in the Likud charter or that that's the, what i meant the, yeah the, that's, the what, that's what i meant charter, the, it says yeah. uh israel's sovereignty will be from the jordan river to to or the euphrates to the to the uh mediterranean you know, to the mediterranean and yeah that's thank you for saying that that when they and this is like you know to put a button on it a lot of the talking points, it's the only democracy, but Israel is the only democracy in the Middle East. Well, if that's the case, then why do you, in the same sentence, say the Palestinians voted in Hamas? After Arafat was dead and was also financed by the Israeli government to prop up a straw man a opposition party that they could perpetually fight against. Well, and Itzhak Rabin was assassinated <laughs> too. And that was when Benjamin Netanyahu was on the come up. So yes. it's people would slow down and listen when they say it's the only democracy in the middle east they voted in pal the palestinians voted in hamas You're like you just said two different things <laughs> you you said that's the only democracy which is voting and then you just said the palestinians voted in hamas also hamas hamas is a political party they are a they don't have a organized military force they have like militias essentially basically like the way that i've interpreted it is it probably looks something like in the 21st century as to what like the revolutionary war like right the like militia. colonies had you know yeah like, and their local... prime minister or whatever it's called just resigned yeah and the leaders the actual leaders of hamas don't even live in west bank or gaza they live in qatar right uh it's it's so blatantly obvious of of what like, come on. it is. Like well, these are all just players in the international chessboard, and me and you and people that watch the news, it's just all emotion. You know, they're just yeah. trying to get everybody up in motion arms, and and it's and it's funny because that leads us into you know calming down, chilling out, and Ukraine medical did medical legalization, and the funny thing about that is is that. The statement they said, we need immediate relief. You know, this can help with PTSD for war. We need immediate relief. But the regulations don't kick in for six months. <laughs> <laughs> that's, like, that's, a, that's, a, that's immediate in government speak. Right. Immediate for government is six months to a year from now. And not only that, when it does kick in, that's not domestic. That's just allowing imports. So exactly. Wild. So not there's there's a lot with this. Ukraine. Okay, so. Yeah. So you you Ukraine is the number one, two, or three exporter of wheat in the world. I think it's yeah, it's yeah, it's number yeah, yeah. Top okay. top five for sure. The basket of Europe. Yep. Keep going. You know, pun intended. And so not only that, they planted hemp at Chernobyl like 20, 30 years ago after it happened to help remediate the nuclear fallout. And then when they say, you know, vegetation and life is coming back earlier than expected. And then Tulsi Gabbard signed on to the HR 3530 about five years ago, which was the HR Industrial Hemp Act. She's like, I visited Ukraine. It's all growing back. And she didn't mention they planted hemp. And I'm sitting there going, why, why didn't you say? I know why you didn't say. But yeah, I was going to say, what do you mean? What do you you mean know, why? Yeah, I mean, I, you know. <laughs> but that also, it also kind of scares me when I saw that correlation, because if they know that hemp can remediate nuclear soil, that cool, means so we can use more nukes. Yeah, that's 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 I was like, I was like, oh, my God, they're using it at, at Chernobyl. I was like, oh, my God, they're using it at Chernobyl. Like mm -hmm. and now this isn't recreational, but like so Ukraine is not holding elections because of the war. They're arresting journalists and no opposition. And yet at the same time, they're legalizing medical marijuana and their and, exports. And, and, and banning banning certain religions. They're banning yeah. Russian textbooks, people that speak Russian. It, mm -hmm. It's it's fascinating the timing of medical marijuana, which Israel has a huge export of um, mm -hmm. wherever they are um, in the Middle East. And so you can kind of see, you know, correlations, not exactly causation. And to be clear, I've never had a top secret clearance. I've never been in the military. I've never, you know, been mm -hmm. privy to you know documents that nobody has. But just doing pattern recognition, you know. Ukraine is decimated right now. Like, what are they going to grow? So they need hemp. 
pumping hemp and cannabis and and yeah i i just i mean hey i'm glad they did it you know sure. Ger germany is actually about to legalize cannabis right now too they actually did i think they have to they have to sign off on it but germany is also a huge industrial country in europe so like interesting it's interesting as these players especially like with the whole nord stream thing and the biggest industrial act of climate terrorism in the history of mankind um so and at the same time you have biden pretending like he he pardoned anybody and you know i mean he's literally uh, you know not doing anything besides just trying to keep breathing and not fall down it's it's pretty obvious you know for anyone report, not saying trump's better out. no oh by no he's got his own fallacies and stuff but i thought it was really funny the the report that came out that was like yeah so biden's mental faculties ain't exactly ideal for world leadership right now he's kind of like not doing so hot and then everybody was like every administration was like he's fine he is a great leader how Just dare you question him shut up it's like dude people are not stupid or blind yeah like, they're about to you know pull some, pull some rug pulls or something like that here in the next you know three three months or so because if you can't you can't oh. see he is not mentally fit to be charged but yet he's still allowed to stay the president right <laughs> it's like it doesn't make it it's like but yo know, then then kamala got asked like hey do you feel you know uh you know equipped to take uh, take the helm and she was like yes i feel totally confident in my ability to lead this nation i am but, ready to step in <laughs> but brother but, but but brother joe is totally cool it's Shut I, up, Kamala. yeah i you know <laughs> it's everybody knows that he can't you know continue this way and you know i don't know what's what's going to happen it's going to be pretty bumpy here the next three months six months or so you think I, we'll have an election i mean i hope so uh but i could i could really see something you know happening where I, I don't know i think there's gonna be funny business for sure but if all the voting machines you know say they go frozen or say there's a cyber attack or going out or whatever like you know, whether or not anything happens, let's say something happens, anybody listening should should be in alarm bells if they say, for the time being, we're going to suspend the election or, I mean, Abraham Lincoln still had the election, even though he got rid of habeas corpus, you know, and by the way, Obama got rid of habeas corpus and that's still law. You know, we have two buffoons running and as much as I don't, you know, agree with RFK Jr.'s stance on Israel. Everything else is pretty good about. <laughs> yeah, everything else he's, he, in my opinion, he's not bad on. And, you know, I would vote for Marianne Williamson ahead of anybody, you know, or Jill Stein. I would vote for Jill Stein over over anybody. Um, I like a lot of what Cornell West does, but he seems a little bit more of like a lifetime activist, you know, um, just kind of getting money off of off that. Um, mm -hmm. But he says a lot of the right things in some situations, but I. I don't think he's going to get on any ballots really anywhere. Um, so that Bob, might... Bob, Bobby's the, like, in my opinion, Bobby's got the most chutzpah and like, and actually has a grasp on historical fact. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, given his family history, obviously he knows the stakes and the level of things that he's involved in. Right, but dude, the 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 blatant disregard for like the like the same level of commonsensical evaluation that he gives to so much he just, other he stuff. Just... Yeah, like he he Joe Biden on the Israel Palestine thing. It's like, whoa, buddy, come back. It's very we clear that's where he's getting his money from. Um... Well, exactly, and and he's got one of like the, the most hardcore Zionist people chirping in his ear about the whole situation and you know to that effect right, i was actually really. having yep i was having a conversation with one of the people that i know that is you know close to him she she's hardcore like pro israel too and i'm like wait what like a lot of the people that i'm surrounded by like or like that i know that are like uh, you know 
more successful than me in their you know endeavors are like hardcore like i had one of them sit, sit in, in in a meeting with me saying philip you know that if we let this like propagate they for you because you are an infidel and i was like what mm -hmm. he's like he's like yeah if you if we let the muslim ideology you know pervade western culture they will exterminate you i was like whoa wow. you are like hardcore kool-aid drunk bro i hey, got if, like if I you have said so about friends. anybody like what whether it's israel arabs you know germans americans whatever it is you know honestly you could probably argue that more about americans at this point you know america not americans you know, if you don't go along with the United States program, we're going to coup you and mm -hmm. and or and or let somebody else take over, which is the same thing. But look at what, what happened with Guaido. <laughs> like, yeah, I mean, it's it's just every I mean, I Iraq now isn't even taking American dollars. Uh, they literally said the banks will not take American dollars. And this is all we're kind of now we're kind of veering into uh, the crypto world um, mm. where that f switch is going to be flipped very soon, sooner than people think, I think, because well, back, to back up, RFK Jr., for the record, is pro-legalization and he's pro-psychedelic legalization. And he said he would use the money to uh, establish rehab center centers and use it for that kind of stuff. So out of anybody talking who's running for president, he's the only one that even has the right idea and then actually a plan to kind of back similar, it up. Similar approach that Portugal took. I think he actually referenced that. Um, mm -hmm. and, and his built. son's and his son's psychedelic experience and yeah. that kind of changing his attitude on the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so when, when people go to the ballot and they're tired of Biden, they're, if it's Biden, let's say it's Biden and Trump and they're tired of that. And they see Kennedy Jr. right there, either as an independent, or I think he's hedging his bets. Um, if he doesn't get on all the, all the ballots, he's going to be a libertarian candidate, um, which really doesn't line up with the libertarian policy, but he, you know, it is what it is. At least he would be on all 50 ballots. Right. And so if, if, you know, people say, Oh, that's not going to happen. Well, you said that about Trump, like people, yeah. people, people <laughs> voted for Trump as a big F you like, and they won. And why and would have people, now you have people like literally writing in, uh, uncommitted on right. the democratic primary ticket right. because of the whole Israel Palestine thing. And like, Oh, we don't want to support our tax dollars going to genocide. It's like, Whoa, people are like waking up much more in mass because like, this is what's such an obvious thing. You can't ignore it anymore. Right. And, and, and like, you know, to, to the whole like ballot, you know, and who might be the candidate. Like I heard somebody theorizing like, yeah, it'll, they're, they're going to pull a hot swap uh, at like, you know, the 11th hour convention put in, put in Gavin as the as the nominee and you know somebody else as his running mate and then I also heard Tulsi Gabbard on Fox the other day saying like yeah I would be Trump's VP and I was like oh I was much more stoked for like a Bernie Tulsi ticket than I am a Trump Tulsi ticket so if you if you actually look back at Tulsi my buddy from the jump was uh something about Tulsi he's like dude she just irks the shit out of me I know she's oh, she She's, She's CFR, just, TLC. Yeah. She, um, if you look back at her 2020 presidential run on Open Secrets, the top 10 donors are all military industrial comp. Number one is the army. And then number four or five is the state, like it says the state of California. So, and then a university of California, like go look at Open Secrets on her 2020 top 10 donors. You're going to be like, what? And and then when you go back to, you know, HR 3530, that industrial hemp uh, bill was sponsored and led by basically all Republicans. And so when she, you know, went against the Democratic Party, then did the primary, then she just left the Democratic Party, not saying she's a grifter, but all politicians really are, you know, but all politicians really are. She sees the, the trend going away from the Democratic Party and she's she's military industrial complex, man. She is no different than. You know, she talks about, you know, she's posting videos and again, I, guns or whatever, you know, on the firing range, all these clickbait things for for freedom and stuff like that. But I have a feeling that she will be uh, Trump's VP pick. And you think so? I, you, don't think I, be, you don't think it'll be uh, Vivek Ramaswamy? 
I don't, uh, mm. because despite what anybody may think, they think Trump is anti-establishment or whatever. No, he's not. He's no. as establishment as it gets. You know, you you made your money doing construction in New York. Who did you do? Who did you get in bed with in New York? To Slum, be a- slumlording off of his dad's coattails. Come right. on, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. So with, you the, know, with, the, with the Kush with the Kushner family, whose dad got locked up by Chris Christie. Uh, yeah. Uh, and Jared then he Kushner hires Bob was- Mueller, whose contacts go all the way back to Epstein and Blinken. Blinken's stepfather is good friends with Jelaine Maxwell's dad, and you're like, wait, is there nobody oh. else? Uh, 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 and Netanyahu, Netanyahu used to sleep on Kushner's couch when he was growing up. Yeah. And, what? and, and then fun fact, have you watched the movie Tetris? Mm-mm. Oh, that I might All drop right, a gonna, factoid that I'll you write that down. down. Uh, so it, it's a, it's a narrative scripted film, but, uh, Robert Maxwell is a character in the film. Why is Robert Maxwell a character involved in the story of Tetris? Hmm, that was interesting okay. to me. He also tried so, to buy our textbooks. Correct. Uh, Robert Maxwell was actually involved in the, uh, essentially like the IP exchange of the Tetris video game. Interesting. So, so basically, so Tetris was created, so Tetris was created by this Russian dude who, uh, or maybe it wasn't created by the Russian dude. Anyways, this 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 guy who had a contract with with Russia with Russia to basically like go out and like find new like IP things, uh, found Tetris at like a Vegas game convention or whatever. It was mm-hmm. like, whoa, this is a, this is a thing. Brought it back to Russia and was like, hey, what do you think of this? They were like, this is cool. Um, and then that guy then at, like I can't remember exactly the like the order of things, but like. That guy was then Robert Maxwell was then trying to buy the IP from that guy to get the domestic US rights for like arcades and consoles. And then it got into this whole like, you know, Maxwell like paying off this like Russian intel guy so that he could let him have. I was like, oh my God, talk about like, you know, some degree of truth in plain sight. Holy shit. I had no idea, and it and it was so it was Maxwell. Oh, it was Maxwell's son that was trying to like move and shake in this deal. And what I also found out that was kind of funny was Robert Maxwell's son was actually the one that like took a hardcore fall for all of the financial crimes that Robert was committing through his like professional career or whatever. Like it was so I was like, what the? I had no That's idea wild. about this story. It was so crazy. <laughs> um. Speaking of disclosure in plain sight, have you watched the Joe Rogan Cat Williams interview? Dude, my buddy sent it to me on Friday and literally he, he just sent it to me. And he said, You have to watch this all in like caps. So no, watch I haven't watched it, it but ASAP. I... And I, everybody watching, watch it ASAP. And while you're while you're doing that, hit the like button, subscribe, and share. And thanks for watching. Um, but they talk about first off, they were baked, and and this is how they were talking like very very i mean joe was going fast but cat you could tell was was i know apparently that was the first time they met each other but anyways they're talking about the emerald tablets and oh. thought and oh, cool like they are they're it's disclosure in very very obvious terms because they're both in my opinion they're both in the same gang and yeah. you know maybe different you know pods in the same gang and they're like it's nice to meet mm-hmm. you and blah blah blah, blah and you know there's room, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting when you watch the interview, you know, because there was conspiracies about his necklace being very occultish and like whatever. And Joe asks him about it. He goes, what's the deal with, with that? And they talk about the Illuminati. It's, they, it's, it's very, very um, interesting, the stuff they touch on, which they don't talk about comedy really at all. Mm. So you're sitting there going, what really was the point of this podcast? Like, it seems mm. like this was more of a informational dissemination between two people that are playing and you can see they do like a little brain game you know back and forth uh cool it's it's watch it and oh well and like they they talk about the anunnaki they talk about and then every time they say something crazy they go man this is good weed (laughs) and it's kind of like no for example it's kind of why i did the cannabis podcast 
so I can talk about some some sideways things, you know, that that go along with cannabis. And is there it's any part of you? It's the gateway. It's the gateway thing. It's not only oh, it's a gateway drug. No, it's a gateway. Mm, it's a hi- it's a highway opener. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a rabbit hole uncoverer. Yep. It's a gateway to the rabbit hole. And because I, I tell a lot of people, if you just study the history of cannabis in the United States, it will branch you out to every issue in the United States, banking, racism, economics, uh, uh, C- CIA, DEA, you know, and I want to do, I'm trying to do a little 10, 15 minute mini doc called the Dirty Harry, uh, the real Dirty Harry about Harry Anslinger, mm-hmm. uh, who was the first treasury secretary, I don't know, department of treasury for the IRS tax division, uh, which did the he, marijuana. He was, he- yeah, yeah, that's what that. Okay, keep going. And, Sorry. and he was the executive. He was literally one of the executive producers on Reefer Madness, and he was best friends with the Duponts and you know all these you know insider people. And I, we, you, at some point, America was cooed, and maybe multiple times. You know, I I don't know, but at least with the JFK, and. Mm-hmm. I think, by the way, there's a great podcast by Rob Reiner, who, you know, has a lot of, you know, he is what he is. Great filmmaker. A lot of other stuff I don't really necessarily agree on. So I had to take this with a grain of salt, but he's got a podcast on Spotify. I think it's called Who Killed JFK? And it's really, really good. Uh, Cool. They basically said it was a, it was a military general that went, you know, they're kind of pinning it on this guy. He's like a four star ranking general that helped the CIA you know, do all this stuff. Um, oh, well, it goes, it goes into like the S force and, uh, you know, the, whoever was on the grassy knoll. I've heard stories about like, you know, there was somebody in one of the drainage culverts. He got shot a couple, multiple times, you know, the, the guy what do you think about the, the driver, front, the, I was going to say the front passenger seat or the driver, like possibly like, I don't honestly, like, yeah, what really happened i still don't have like a this is you know what happened i you know i am very much staunchly in this camp i know that lee harvey oswald didn't shoot him i know that's not about that myself too yeah I, I know that but everything else like i don't know like you know the other interesting thing that came up i think it was sometime last year uh but was bobby basically coming out and saying like sirhan sirhan didn't shoot my dad or my my dad Dude, that's crazy. He talked about, he named the people who killed his his dad. Now he says the JFK thing. He's like, I'm less close to that, obviously, because that's my uncle, not my dad. But yeah. he says at the Ambassador Hotel, he goes, if you look at the picture of his dad, you know, when he's famous one line on the floor, you can see a tie in his hand. And he says it's because he turned, he got shot in the back by his security, literally mm-hmm. and figuratively, and turned around and saw who it was and grabbed the tie. And ba- it's like a scene from a movie, you know, like yeah. turned around, saw this and grabbed his tie and then fell back. And he's like, you can see the tie in his hand and mm-hmm. and Saran Saran at an empty clip and all the bullets were accounted for. And, you know, at some like at some point and I've been saying this for a couple of years now and the metaphor I use is, OK, if you if your girlfriend, wife, husband, whoever said, hey, we need to talk. And at one time they told you 20 things that are massive that they lied about to you. Like, hey, I have big things I got to admit to you. You'd probably leave, break up with them and be really, really mad to the point of um, no return. But if you disclose one lie a month and give them time to cool off from that lie, then they may not be as mad or emotional. They'll be like, you know what? I'm really mad you lied at me, but you know, we'll, we'll get past it. Just give me some time. And then once you- the- Go ahead. I was going to say, once you do that, they know that they can just gaslight you. So, so the, that's JFK, a, that's 9-11, that's Israel, that's Ukraine, it's it's Trump, Russiagate, everything. Yep. The Jordan Canada's. Peterson clip that I that I think kind of kind of is an anecdote to that is, you know, I'm going to push you as far as you'll let me until you say stop, and then I'm going to hold there. And then I'm going to start pushing you some more until you say stop, and then we're going to stop there. And before you know it, you're going to have let me push you a mile, and you're going to look around and go, wait, well, how the hell did I get here? And mm-hmm. you know, he's like, I, and then I would look at you and say, well, you let me get you here. Like, what do you mean? And like, I was like, I was so taken aback by that thinking that like that is really the incrementalism that we're dealing with is like, and you know, this isn't 
you know, even necessarily taking in the full breadth of the power of the psychological warfare, you know, dynamics and tools and whatever that we know that intelligence groups use, you know, on a mass scale at this point, you know, with you all Harari coming out and saying like, you know, there's no such thing as free will anymore. It's like, skirt, what? Like, I'm a human. I have free will, right? Or like, you're telling me that, you know, we are in a simulation and like right. that's bullshit. Oh, okay. What are you really telling me here? Copy that. Yeah, right? Like, oh, we, we have this the system's sophistication at this point to literally dictate what an in, like what people will do down to an individual scale. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, sure. So you don't have to put anything in my skin. You already have that capacity. Great. Fantastic. I'm glad right. you motivated me to do this podcast so I could talk about it. Right. <laughs> and and it's that's the same with cannabis. It's we're going to legalize it any day, any day. And at the same time, you're seeing each state that does billions and, you know, hundreds of millions and billions in tax revenue. Uh, the crazy thing is, I think some cities and I think it was Portland just, just trying to recriminalize drugs again. Uh, mm -hmm. Thailand is trying to recriminalize marijuana again. And you're sitting here going like this. It has to be distraction. It has to be just something to talk about because that's really like, this is one thing that's always fascinated me about politics is, and even having parents, you know, if anybody has parents that have argued before over the same thing, multiple times, you're like, are you still arguing about this? How are we not? You're intentionally just arguing to argue now because you truly don't want anything to be done or else you would just be like, all right, what's our decision? Like, do you just constantly argue about where to go eat or do you actually go eat somewhere? You know, right. like it's day. Th that's actually a little funny short film. Day three. No, we should. <laughs> and you're like, I'm yeah. starving, literally. And they both die of starvation because they're arguing. <laughs> Punchline. It, it it's like the, op the, op the opposite of seven. Like it's so <laughs> funny. It came, that came up on uh, one of the cues of one of the things that uh, my wife and I were watching the other night. And I was like, oh, have you seen seven? She's like, oh, I don't think so. I'm like, what? It's one of the greatest movies ever made. And it's so trippy. What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box, man? What's in the box? And like that came up as a meme for something. And she was like, what's this from? I was like, this is from Seven. <laughs> what do you mean? That's such, like, a, oh, such a good dude. movie. Dude, such a, such a, like, and, you know, shout out to PETA extraordinaire, uh, Kevin Spacey. <laughs> dude, <laughs> that's or, another or, conspiracy or, that is unreal. He, yeah. he got off Scott. Every single one of yep. his accusers basically is dead. Died. Yep. Miraculously. Uh, what, funny how that works. Him him and the Clintons just seem to have this knack and this pension for anybody they, that come out against them just happens to drop dead eventually. Now, if that was me and I kept borrowing money from people and not paying them back, what would you say? You know, or if I kept, you wouldn't loan me any more money, you know, or, yeah, if, or if I kept. Doing, or let me borrow some money, bro. <laughs> yeah let me let me borrow some money no okay like it's if there's patterns like people are like oh you're a conspiracy theorist no i'm a pattern recognitionist you know if if because that's literally what the military intelligence and political science is is just pattern recognition on a macro scale because then you have these four or five events over five years and then you tighten the time frame and you see okay let's look at this as if it was one day okay that's the mm -hmm. intention you know it's mm -hmm. always been that you know in there's so, I mean, I mean, there's almost too much stuff to talk about. And the the one thing I, I don't know if I sent this to you in Fulton County, Georgia, there was a cyber attack on, oh, yeah. on the court systems that are prosecuting Trump and, mm -hmm. and no one reported it. Like it was on, not on, I mean, they, they put it on like their website or whatever, but nobody covered it on air. And at the bottom of the article, you know, the, the punchline is always just at the bottom sentence or two. I and usually just scroll to the bottom and read right. the last paragraph. <laughs> and it literally says the Georgia FBI or investigation, whatever, is not currently investigating this issue. Mm -hmm. So you have a cyber attack that attacked the records of the court that's taking Trump to jail or trying to take him to jail. And no one's talking about it. I, and then there was a cyber attack on hospitals in Chicago and Jersey. And if you just Google cyber attack, you'll find one in the last 24 hours. Oh, bro. Uh, so, uh, so one of the groups that I like have come to know in whatever, uh, are, is a cybersecurity company and, you know, like, yeah, they had a map that was live and would literally show 
all the cyber attacks happening mm. at that moment, where they were coming from, where they were going to, the scale, the you know everything. And this was like a live map. And this was back in like the mid two thousands, like you know two thousand ten ish probably. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, dude, like even back then, like cyber attacks were a huge, huge, huge thing. And so, like you know, kind of to put a full circle on this conversation. My thinking is that the cyber pandemic that the Schwabian people are, you know, propagating, whatever, that will be one factor that brings in CBDCs. They won't necessarily be issued by central banks. They'll probably be issued by the commercial banks because everybody now is more aware of what a CBDC is and they'll be more comfortable simply transitioning the already digital dollars that they usually use to transact at this point rolled over into just a digital asset. And, you know, because, oh, well, cash we can't trace and, you know, we need the, the the transactions reported to the blockchain, blah, 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 blah. Oh, by the way, we also need all of your biometrics so that we can know that it's you that we're actually issuing all of these digital currencies to. Oh, and also we will have control over what you spend that on, where, how much, yada, yada, yada. And if you break, you know, if you if you teeter on the edge of the threshold of what we're supposed to allow, shut off mm -hmm. or confiscate or confiscate. So now we're getting into uh, end game scenarios and stuff, right? Where I fully agree with you, but tokenization is the future of commodities where natural, you have the natural BRICS, asset class. You have the BRICS countries, you know, Brazil, Russia, India, China, South Africa, and 20 or 50 other countries are joining BRICS. And they have um, what's the operation? It's called Project something where they're planning on all simultaneously no longer taking the american dollar which would collapse it overnight mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. project i forgot I'll, I'll remember it later but are you familiar or do you hold any crypto at all with like xrp or or anything dude my my crypto woe is i bought bitcoin back in 2012 I want to say I got like cut like $200 worth and I was so broke at the time like once like oh no I don't have any money I need that couple hundred dollars and like it wasn't going up or doing anything at that point so I was like fuck I just I need this couple hundred bucks took it out paid for what I needed to pay for and yep. then just didn't get back into it ever and then I just watched everything happen I was like oh no I missed but then I realize there's a lot of people still talking about the fact that like Bitcoin, like like I was reading something the other day that like, you know, how it got to 60 plus re just in like the past like a couple like week or two and like just like in 2024, the past couple of weeks and how Since the spot ETFs were approved. Correct. And then it's going to go up again. But then it's going to go way down. It's going to bottom out and it might bottom out down back to like 10 grand or something like that. So there will be this huge balloon up and then all the huge holders are going to sell it off, whoosh, crash it to make it like you scare everybody out so they can mm -hmm. buy it up again, buy up the rest. Mm -hmm. and, and then it's yep. going to go right back up to be like, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars per coin. There's so many things happening at once, right? So mm -hmm. BlackRock, you know, all the, the BlackRock ETF that was approved, they've bought something like Thou like I don't know thousands of Bitcoin in the last you know month since it and it's institutional. Also, while saying Bitcoin is not a reliable thing to invest in, so right. so big they they tanked the 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 price of Bitcoin for like the twenty four hour cycle all or whatever that that they use to buy it up. It's all manipulation because they, it's just what they did with Zillow. All right, BlackRock owns Zillow, right? So. Oh, Zillow bought up all the real, I mean, BlackRock, Vanguard, or State Street, one of the two owns Zillow. Yeah. You know, one of the three owns Zillow. So yeah. when they say, oh, the Zillow real estate's tanking, so Zillow, you're also, you're assuming they care about that entity's balance sheet instead of owning the assets of that. That's why people buy failing companies, right? Well, why are you mm -hmm. buying a failing company? Well, I want their IP. You know, I want their, I want their stuff, uh, their in-house stuff. Which is I actually had a conversation about the when the whole ten nine like to bring it back to the beginning the one the whole ten ninety one media thing was like really hitting the fan the like 
latter like q4 of 2023 i was actually sitting like having a conversation with one of the guys i was working with on a project i'm on right now and, and he was like giving me this whole like hostile takeover methodology where like literally all you have to do is basically buy 51 percent stake in a company and you then retain majority ownership of that company and can dictate what happens with it i was like whoa Yep. That's a very sim simplified, like basic understanding of it. But that's essentially the dynamics that are at work. And at that point, if you had done the hostile takeover of a 1091 media, you would own all of the IP. And I was like, wait, like, wouldn't that be? But but then you also take on all of the debt of the company. And because there was such a backlog of unpaid royalties yep. to people, their 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 debt accrual was insurmountable for any kind of like unless you had the you know the liquidity to be able to pay all of that off, you were completely upside down. Mm -hmm. Liquidity. Speaking of liquidity, so BTC is the ticker for Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Beta test coin. So <laughs> It, I'd never heard that. It doesn't do anything. You know, no one trades on it. It's law. It's 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 uh, not fast. It's clunky. It's expensive. So, what they're doing is, I think XRP is the golden horse, and hmm. XRP because XRP has is the top six crypto, and mm -hmm. they haven't, and it's under investigation by the SEC, which means it's in bed with the government. So. The reason why people they're suppressing the price and no one's going to buy a shit ton of it because it's in the middle of a lawsuit, right? No, but at the same time, it's in the middle of a lawsuit. Central Bank of Ireland is now using XRP. Cutter UAE is now using XRP. They are using XRP Interesting. everywhere for on-demand liquidity because they're going to do, this is my conspiracy prophecy for what's coming. And if I, how much more time you got? I'm open. Uh, so when it, stops, got, like, when it stops, when it stops, yeah, that's cool. So you notice all these countries are buying record gold reserves right now, but yep. for some reason, the price of gold is not really going up. It's going mm -hmm. down, making it cheaper for them to buy. So there's going to be a gold reevaluation. So whatever the price of gold is right now, they're going to overnight, and this has already been done before. It's, it's been precedented, so it's not like something that hasn't happened before. They're going to say, okay, let me back up. Because our treasury bonds, our debt is so big, no one's buying our treasury bonds. There was an auction for our treasury bonds. No one bought them. So what happens? You have to buy your own. How do you buy your own? You have to print money, right? So this tokenization, Bitcoin's backed by nothing. So you, these coins have to either have a utility or they have to have an asset store value that backs it so xrp is going to be used so russia china BRICS. there's not going to be one bitcoin for the whole world there will be one interoperability that uses so if i wanted to convert say you're right now in russia or china or cutter or whatever and i want to send you 50 bucks i'm going to have to exchange the 50 bucks then I'm going to have to wire it to you. And then you're going to have to exchange that 50 bucks for the, for the dollar you're in. XRP does that like that. Yeah. And it runs it all through. So you're going to have XRP here and all the countries are going to be using their own stuff. And in real time, it's going to be converting it in real time. But in order to have that, you have to be backed by gold. Texas, I didn't know this, this is crazy. Last year, last year, introduced a bill, I don't know if it passed, introduced a bill in Congress to establish a Texas digital token backed by gold. And I showed it to somebody and I forget, oh, I'll send it to you. Google, just Google that. Google Texas gold digital token 2023 or something. And so when they say the dollar is tanking and all this stuff, they're going to flip the switch and just move us over to gold. You know, things are going to be backed by gold and natural resources, natural gas, uh, oil, whatever. Because the dollar is... They're, they're, they're commodifying nature. The natural, nat natural asset class is a new type of asset where literally all natural commodities are going to be tokenized. Yep. Uh, the, they're going to tokenize CEO, art, everything. 
everything. Uh, is it Larry Fink that's the BlackRock CEO? I'm pretty uh -huh. sure it's him. He was the one. He was on some you know money talk show or whatever and he was like super excited about this he was like yeah everything in the future is gonna be tokenized why wouldn't we want to be able to fractional fractionalize wouldn't, everything that exists wouldn't you want to own a fraction of the mona lisa right for ten thousand dollars you can be a 0.1 percent owner in the mona lisa wouldn't you want to own part of the global supply of air <laughs> water, water? Oh, my buddy just sent me a picture of uh, Lago Vista's uh, up at the lake, Lake Travis in mm -hmm. Texas. The water is, is, is hurting. It's like when I first moved here, the water level was like up here. It's like now to right here. Oh, dude, like Pyramid Pyramid Lake that's like up the 101 or the 5 or up the grapevine part of the way. Like you can literally see where, uh, what's her name's kid died, the chick that was on Glee. Oh, uh, geez. Or, no, she, she, she died. Lee, not her Lee and Michelle? Not her. No, uh, the Latina chick. I know you're talking about. I forget the name. The one that the one that like dated yeah. Sean or whatever. Anyway, anyways, uh, yeah, where she died, like that that water level has like you could see it on the rocks around the lake. But like we're talking like hundreds of feet worth of depletion. Like just that that was such a striking visual to me every time I've like driven up up and down there over the past um, like couple of years. Like so, uh, you know. I think one of the things that you and I connected on early on when we first met was like just kind of going through an awakening process. And like, I really enjoy these kinds of conversations because it's not so much a mental spar, but like a, like how much of the mosaic tapestry have you revealed to yourself and how does that further illuminate <laughs> pun intended mm -hmm. uh you know the mosaic that i've already kind of got constructed in my understanding of reality and like i think it's also it, it's been these kinds of conversations that other people that know way more than me i love listening to because like instead of taking like a fine little tiny brush stroke to this little tiny part like these people are like painting like huge swaths at a time in terms of what they're revealing in terms of kind of bolstering my understanding of things and i think that like platforms like this and mediums like this and conversations like this are so important to the collective understanding that like until you're really willing to like grapple with facts that may be uncomfortable or you know grind against the paradigm that you'd previously had constructed for yourself you know everybody's going to come into their their path of awakening at their own pace which actually does segue me back to something else unless you had a specific subject you wanted to like no go for it to. okay so back to the screening for the show that i went to uh for my friend who majored or masters in israel palestine uh I, so there in this show is a conspiracy pin board of all the players that are involved in this school, which it is not just a school, it is a whole organization, but I will leave it to viewers to go and check out the actual show itself to like, it's a heart wrenching, awful show, but, and to okay. see like one of my best, one of my best friends have to like describe what happened to her is awful. And like made me fucking cry in, you know, sitting in the, the theater at CAA. I'm like weeping like, Oh my God. Like, Anyways, so this conspiracy board is in this show, and it was constructed to basically give a visual cue for how a lot of stuff was connected, where on the maps these places were, blah, 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 who the players were. So I started talking to one of the people that was involved in it, that you know, thing coming to life. And I started talking to her about like link analysis software and all of the tools that she used in constructing, mm -hmm. you know, and, and painting the painting the mosaic of this particular story and situation, which is awful. Uh, and, you know, kind of got further and further into the conversation. And she was like, OK, I'm going to tell you some stuff that like I don't normally tell anybody. But because we're already this far down the rabbit hole, I know that you know certain things that are going to make this not seem absolutely insane. Okay. So she's like, I come from a cult upbringing. Okay. My parents were involved in the intelligence community. Okay. I started looking into 
the dates of events of things such as my birthday and eventually straight up asked my dad, dad, was my birthday part of a ritual? Yes. She was born on the full moon between the spring equinox and the summer solstice, like sometime mm -hmm. like late, late March. Right. Mm -hmm. So she starts like further wow. describing, you know, the people that her parents were, you know, would hang around with and socialize with and some of the events that they went to as a family. And she reveals that she was trafficked, how that corresponds to this TV show is that there were multiple locations that this organization had founded around the world. There was one in Costa Rica. There was one in Jamaica. There were several in the United States. Uh, there was one in the Czech Republic. There was one in Mexico. Uh, it's through an organization called WASP. Jeez. Again, you know, weird, occultic, blah, 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 whatever. Um, this person was at the, was like shipped off to the one in Costa Rica. And then I'm like, oh my God, I lived in Costa Rica, you know, what a vida. And she mm. was like, yeah, wasn't, wasn't such a great life when I was down there. I was like, oh yeah, I can't imagine. So, cause like the, these places were basically like torture camps, right? Like with, with no, with no governmental or any kind of organizational oversight whatsoever. So then I finally asked the question. I said, Okay, so given everything that you've told me, you know, relationship of your family directly to intelligence community and, and the other, oh, the other point that she made is she was like, if you start to look into the family trees of a lot of the other victims, they, for whatever reason, are also linked to the intelligence community. Even the director of this show's own father was part of the intel community. So I was like, okay, clearly you've heard of Jeffrey Epstein, of course. And you know all the you know associations and allegations. Do you think that this school and this organization is part of the broader conspiracy in human and child sex trafficking? And she was like, she like looked around. She was like, I would never say this in public. She was like, yes. Hmm. I'm like, hmm. so and, you know that's kind of where our our conversation teetered out because like somebody else came out and kind of interjected and you know things kind of went in a different direction from there mm -hmm. but even just someone who comes from that family experience involved in a project like that is that gets picked up by a netflix that gets supported by an organization like caa cia i mean I was like, hmm. Anyone? Go ahead, keep going. No, I mean that. that, that I, I I was waiting. Like this is basically Any... like, what do you think? What do you think, Brett? <laughs> also, I, noticed, <laughs> I, I I did I did have a funny thing that I just realized your your initials BDS. I was like, uh -huh. <laughs> that's why my my Instagram tag is not BDS because I'm like this is it, people are gonna think the wrong thing because this is literally my initials. <laughs> um, because it's like you know what yeah. anyway. Um, one yeah. letter off. Um, but you're talking about rituals or or boycott boycott divestment and sanction. The what? Boycott divestment and sanction. The the Israel. Anyways, I thought it was BDS. Israel. Right, yeah. right. So anyway, whenever sorry, they say that on the news, I'm like, oh my god, uh, I get slandered. Talk. Not about to mention, I anytime I talk to a news person, I'm like, my name is Brett Stelter. No relation to Brian. Don't worry. Um, mm. You know, yeah. uh, but. You're talking about rituals and dates and more people are getting on to gematria and numerology and good. You should be because the billionaires use it and it's a very real thing. And as much as people want, oh, it's hocus pocus stuff. Okay. I'm not going to, I'm not going to try to convince you, but I'm going to sit here and tell you every time you see a replay on television, look for a 13 or 33, you'll see it. Look for the, when did they stop to the first commercial? Oh, there's 13 minutes left or there's 33 seconds left or it's 13 to nine or 11 to two equals 13. It, it is everywhere. And, you know, 9-11 itself, you know, that's, you know, ritualistic. The year after that, they had this big ritual one year anniversary where they walked around and it, it ended up forming an eye of Horus the next mm -hmm. year on the actual thing. And when you watch the Academy Awards, I mean, listen, you're a producer. 
I'm in the film world too. I'm a member of Screen Actors Guild. You know, we've been in the film world. It is, and going back to um, what we were talking about, Killers of the Flower Moon, it, the rituals are in everything. And and you said they mentioned the Freemasons. I didn't catch it, but they're literally doing a ritual on camera in a Masonic hall, you know, and in the correct hierarchy that they got in the industry. Scorsese, De Niro, DiCaprio. He's filming him, paddling him. And <laughs> by the way, Leo isn't a method actor because they said he put a newspaper in his pants to actually uh, absorb absorb the blow. So no, bro, I ain't buying that you ate bear meat in the middle of Alaska if you're putting a newspaper in your pants. Take it like a champ, method acting. Um, <laughs> and, and you're watching it. They're, he's flogging him in the middle of a Masonic hall. And they're admitting on checker, camera in a checker film. Board, checkerboard floors, right. blah, blah, blah. Every music video, checkerboard floors. And you're you're watching a Masonic, you know, my, my all my great grandfathers were all Freemasons. So just throwing it out there. And like <laughs> they were all Freemasons. I'm not a Freemason. My writing partner was a Freemason. I don't think he does it anymore. I've been to Freemasonic temples, halls, everything. It fascinates me. Um, because just like anything, the intent of it is good, but the people that run mm -hmm. it at the top not so good not they they have their own ulterior motives. agenda yeah, yeah. and yeah. and it gets darker than anybody like what your friend was talking about i mean do, do people not put weight into what paris hilton and britney spears have come out and said in the last year or two paris hilton literally said her parents sent her to like basically a sex camp you know for young hot girls and the rich people and britney spears is the same thing if that's even britney spears anymore at this point um mm -hmm. And I'm, you know, just having fun with that. But like, at the also, same time, Paris, Hilt Paris Hilton sent a gift basket to the director of the same show, by the way. I thought that was funny. And I was like, oh, because like they started talking about Paris. I was like, Paris, like Paris Hilton. Oh, yeah, that's who it was. Yeah. And she, and came, then, she comes out and says that it's all brainwashing and they just put you through this, you know, abusive place. So basically they can break your brain down and own you. Yeah, that's basically what this this whole show is about. And it's mm -hmm. it's which is the uh, metaphor of order out of chaos or light out of darkness and now everything has to crumble for something new to come out of it but mm -hmm. whether or not when that crumbles is that organic or is that manufactured. stimulated manufactured you know i believe probably a long time ago somebody probably did you know maybe it's jesus whoever did have a transformation of like listen i'm a new person and they found the light launched consciousness and all that stuff and then obviously other people are like okay well, I don't have to do the personal stuff. I could just like destroy this country or destroy these people and then build them back up. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, yeah, it's everywhere. It's rising the Phoenix from the ashes, you know, rise of the dragon, the year of the dragon. And mm -hmm. this is the, you know, we're entering the age of Aquarius, which is supposed to be a more peaceful, unifying time, but that comes after something, you know, it mm -hmm. comes after the fourth turning that we're currently living in. And well, the, you know that's that's one of the uh one of the concluding themes in the lost century was the hopi prophecy was like the divergent paths and there will there will come a a divergence where we can either make the right choice or we make the wrong choice and this all goes away we're there that line that line goes squiggly mm -hmm. or it or it goes on forever yeah i i think we're there um because even if they do usher in cbdc's and digital wallets i mean you already have a digital wallet on your phone you just don't think mm -hmm. of it like that, you know? Exactly, I, exactly. You, know, you just, mm -hmm. uh, Solana, I think, just issued, uh, or I forget where it was. It was, a, it was a country or person or whatever. They issued all their concert tickets as NFTs. So there's well, no, it's so just concert, yeah. You were asking if I'm holding any crypto. So one of the projects that I'm kind of like, you don't have to refer say it if you don't want to. But. It, it, I mean, it's fine. I, like, it's, it's just funny because you're bringing up the whole ticketing aspect, and that's literally what this platform is providing is is the ticketing infrastructure to rival that of a ticket master or a you know whatever. And like, I like, I don't necessarily like, and this is where it gets into that weird like, conf like conflicting idea in my own understanding is like. On one hand, I see utility in this and I see it as like it's not something that's like invading my privacy necessarily or, you know, get it like I, I don't know. But 
the ticketing aspect of it doesn't seem as problematic for me and my understanding of things but i can totally understand that like the tokenization of everything is a problem so are we not like tokenizing ticketing and shouldn't that kind of be correlated in some fashion to be potentially problematic i like i guess maybe i don't know mm -hmm. but at the same time like i don't like i see artificial intelligence and in some of this di digital infrastructure as inevitable and why not try and tame the beast in a way that can be used for better in my utilization of it? Because just like a hammer is a tool to build something, it can also bash somebody's brains, you know, or a gun can, you know, be used to hunt food, you know, be it four legs or it could be used to hunt two leg things. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, it's it's all a matter of like application of the tool and what your intent is behind its utilization. And it's like, again, like, I don't there, know, I'm just kind of like spinning in circles at this point, but. There's so many, like there's a difference between necessary use cases and optional use cases, like changes and transitions in society where it's like, listen, we're choosing to go digital instead of like, no, we have to. Like these utilities of, of like Bitcoin, you don't have to have Bitcoin. Like it doesn't, mm -hmm. if it went away, the world will keep going. Same with Ethereum or, or pretty much any other crypto. You know, if it went away, the world still goes. What are things that you need to have? Like you said, do you need a gun or do you want a gun? Kind of be both a little bit, you know. It, it depends on, you know, the argument or whatever. But what do you yeah. need? You need clothes. You know, you need food. You need water. So when they, when they say like, I guess where I'm going with this is the digital digitization of everything does it need to be digitized or do we want it to be digitized you know to make it easier for us you know i i you know i, I can't know. see the i can't see the future so i don't know you know but i do know we don't need money you know we don't need cash um, the one, because the mon one eye money one eye because at the end of the day if i want that shirt and you want this light trade i'll just trade you for that shirt for the light where that went south is when someone came in, bad actor, and said, hey, you know, your shirt's worth way more than that camera. You know, you should let me you negotiate. Should, or you should get two cameras. You should get two or, cameras, yeah. Or better better yet, give me both things. I'm going to give you these other things that say this is what you gave me this yep. is the value that i dictated for those things and so now you guys have your respected value or respective <laughs> value things that i so gave if you went you. up to somebody if you went up to somebody right now and said listen if you give me it's really crazy if you give me all of your stuff i'll give you a piece of paper that says it's worth five hundred thousand dollars you'd be like what mm -hmm. bro go pound sand that's banking yep like that's just were, were, you, were you the one that I was talking to a while back about the like trading up for things like you start off with a paperclip and you see what you can how high you can trade I think so up that was so fascinating to me it's I was thinking like like wow what an experiment of like yeah. uh, one human psychology to you know yeah, I mean, basically, it is. It's just a psychological experiment because, mm -hmm. like, you know, how good are you at selling something? How good are you at, you know, persuasion and you know all the tactics and stuff that it yeah. takes to make a deal. And that and that's when people realized we just need a charismatic person to sell our racket. That's and it, it. Sure, ain't Joe Biden no more. <laughs> no. So to bring that all to bring that all back full circle for the last couple five minutes or so, but like, you know. They, they never, I mean, our government's literally not doing anything like, and anything they are doing is not helping the people. I mean, they're, it, facilita it, they're facilitating the sale of armaments to destroy things. That is one thing our government is doing, which, and apparently also building uh, CIA bases in Ukraine that weren't, you know, haven't been there for the past 10 years. No. And we weren't involved in the whole Ukraine conflict, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, no. blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and, and the wild part is that like, it, it's, it's so obvious to anybody that's been you know, paying attention at all. Like, like you said, 9-11 was my first, you know, I was always fascinated by Vietnam, World War II, Civil War, all that kind of stuff. But 9-11 happened in front of my eyes. And, you know, as a sophomore, it was interesting. So I was talking to somebody, they, they said that they were sitting in the class too. And then, they, you know, how they used to wheel the TVs in to, 
I said the same thing. We both, now maybe this is just coincidence, but like, and it probably is, but we were watching and they said, yeah, it already hit the, she's like, yeah, they wheeled in the thing after the first tower is already burning. And then I got to see the second one. That's when I saw. And I've talked to multiple people. They're like, that's almost exactly what I saw. And I'm sitting there going, that's wild, you know, and we're watching Ukraine in real time, Israel in real time. I don't really like who's the peace candidate. Don't exist. They don't exist. And that's supposed to be the progressive, right? That's supposed to be the left's oh. issue is anti-war. They lost they lost that nomer a while ago. Yeah. So we have this duopoly. Bernie, Bernie was Bernie was the last bastion of the like, you know, that to a degree because, you know, he would refuse to sign on to the NDAAs and all, you know, all that yeah. kind of stuff. But even it, him, he, he he cucked hardcore to Hillary and anyway. Well, they said, Hey, if you don't cuck, your your wife's gonna, you know, she she got how much? Three hundred thousand dollars for a book that she still hasn't written? Yeah. And and he made how many millions off of the the book that he wrote? <laughs> he can't talk about the millionaire class anymore because he's part of that. Politics. He can talk about the the dirty billionaires. Leave it up to a politician to always be a politician. You know, a bear is a bear, a dog is a dog, a human's a human. A politician is a politician. No, and no, don't go, don't go miss miss speciesing things. I'm right? sorry, oh. I don't want to miss species. Um, the wrong, <laughs> the wrong noun for the species. I, I because definitions I, I, are fluid, just like gender. I mean, they're, they're interoperable, like for sure. They really are. There is no, I, you're right about that. I only hear like people should read words from a politician as a transcript. Like they shouldn't, they shouldn't look at it. Like it's a female talking like Elizabeth Warren versus, you know, Tom Tillis or Rand Paul versus Lindsey Graham. Just read the transcripts. Mm -hmm. Don't look at who the name is. This is why I tell people with politics or any article, any article you read, whether it's part politics, sports, whatever take out and remove and redact the adjectives out of the story. That's the story. So when it'll say the dumb Republicans passed, no, the Republicans passed a, it's how you get through it without being man emotionally manipulated. You know, take out the That's adjectives, really good point. take out the adjectives of the sentence and you'll have the facts. You know, if you see a headline, you know, opposition leader who's attractive, you know, dies in Moscow. And it's like, no opposition leader dies in Moscow. So it's like you can tell. That's one thing I realized a while ago. I was like, oh, these these words are not necessary. You know, it's it's creative writing. You know, it's it's just like you're writing a script. So I yeah. <laughs> we we've gone on uh, you know so many tangents. I'm surprised this is gonna this is probably gonna get pulled. But I know you got to go oh, yeah. in a no, right. um, in a minute or so. But we'll wrap up. But uh, I I definitely want to do this uh, again. You know, sometime sure. soon. Um, because we're gonna have to keep updated with everything, but it's a lot, lots of changes in a week. Yeah. Um, Not but, to say that like people could light themselves on fire tomorrow. That and, was you know, wild, and we didn't even talk about that. that. Was wild, and and I had people, nobody, and nobody reported on it in the mainstream until like you had to because it went so viral across all these all the social media platforms. Yeah. <laughs> and then the, and then that day, Biden says there might be a ceasefire next week. Bro, you are just. It's like literally you catch someone in their lie and they're like, well, I might be able to do that later. And you're like, yeah. whoa, now you come out about it. And it's just, yeah. I don't That's know. Gross. I wish people would realize people are not the enemy. You know, it's the people running the people. And I just want everyone to get stoned and chillax. That's that's what I want. Whether you use a pen, edibles, you know, vapes, whatever it is, I, I just... I just want everyone to chill out. 